See, I'm a maniac. The illest, the illest mother. On this week's edition of Titans All Access, we're looking to the future, not spending time on the past. Okay, maybe we're going to spend some time on this past Tuesday, but we're looking forward to Sunday's game with Houston, and we have a lineup of cleanup hitters to get us ready. Pro Bowl safety Kevin Byard, Titans president and CEO Burt Nihill, Titans radio's Dave McGinnis, and Titans general manager John Robinson. It's a star-studded lineup that won't get pushed around as Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derrick Henry, sacked! Rashad Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith, and we're here to talk to you about the 4-0. 4-0, 4-0, Tennessee Titans. How about that, Amy Wells? Oh, Mike, Keith, it never gets old. It just sounds so good. Great win over Buffalo on Tuesday night. I think one of the top storylines, fans back in the stands at Nissan Stadium providing energy. Man, talk about things that sounded good. Even though it wasn't the full Nissan Stadium, the energy was there. The crowd noise was there. The excitement was there. It was everything you want in a Titans game. It was so good to have fans. Back. And winning by 26 points. And winning by 26 points. But that's not what we were talking about, Mike. No, that's not. But it's still true. A lot of the team elements have been talked about in the hours and days since the Titans victory over Buffalo. But let's rekey on some individual performances that were outstanding. I want to throw one at you and then you can throw one at me. So my first one to you is Malcolm Butler. Oh, Malcolm Butler. Not one, but two interceptions. Golly, it's so good to see him finally kind of show out the way that he's wanted to. All right, now, Mike, how about one for you? A.J. Brown. Huge having A.J. back, especially with Corey Davis, Adam Humphreys, and Cameron Batson out. The early touchdown catch, a big key in the ball game to get the Titans off to a good start. That's an A.J. Brown play. And the catches that he made in traffic later in the ball game, seven catches overall. Huge to have this guy back. Throw you another receiver who's also a special teams demon. Khalif Raymond. Uh, Khalif Raymond has been my guy from the very beginning, Mike Keith. I love Khalif Raymond. And he showed up on a day when he really needed to. There just weren't a lot of receivers out there. But that punt return. Oh, Mike Keith, the punt return. So exciting to see him making big plays in the moments that he needs to. Let's talk about some other big plays. More importantly, some stiff arms. Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry didn't have a big game yardage-wise. But he did have two touchdowns. He had some important runs in the course of the ball game. And he also got Josh Norman's attention on a play that did not count. Maybe the play of the year so far in the NFL in terms of a video highlight. He said he'd been, been doing too many curls in his workouts. Uh, haven't we all? I'm going to start doing more. <laughs> you know who's been doing the workouts? Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill absolutely has. He had a game where he just didn't make a lot of mistakes, and that's so good to see. His biggest mistake, almost falling down celebrating a touchdown, which happens sometimes, you know? But you know, it was his wife Lauren's birthday. He was excited to play well on her birthday. Well, isn't that lovely? Isn't that romantic and special? Maybe we'll hear some romantic and special comments from the post game with Titans players, but probably not. Doubt it. What happened on the stiff arm play because it seems to be a big hit on social media for sure. I was doing, I've been doing too many curls. So I gotta, I gotta lay out the arms. Big dog. My boy got two on the day. John New. Hey, I, hey, hey, I'm just trying to be great, man. I like my dog, man. I said, we, we just we expect to win every time we go out there. We, we get a chance to play, we expect to win, no matter who we play. Enjoy the moment. We're, we're heading in the right direction, but I've got to keep a foot on the gas and, and keep you know getting better as the season goes on. We love ball. We love playing together. Uh, we just miss doing that. You know, and um, through that process, we're just ready to get back. And glad NFL and you know, the whole organization is able to work something out. 
you know, going through protocols so we are safe to be able to play against a good team and a good opponent um, tonight and getting the win. But you got to put that one in your rearview mirror. Yes, it's time to move on. Move on to Houston. The scouting report with John Robinson is next on Titans All Access. Titans All Access continues with the scouting report brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. Titans General Manager John Robinson joins us. Congratulations on the Tuesday night win, John. Thanks, Mike. Take me through what you were most proud of about the 42 to 16 victory over the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I think, you know, really it was is the mindset uh, of our football team, the mindset of everybody in our organization certainly dealt with a lot of distractions, a lot of adversity going into the game. But for our, our players and coaches to craft a game plan, weathering that storm there and coming out with a big win against a very talented, very good and at the time undefeated Buffalo team. Houston is next as you delve back into AFC South play and Overall, I want to ask you about their situation because they have a new coach, an interim coach in Romeo Cornell. You know Romeo Cornell well from your days in New England. What's it like to prepare for a team that changed coaches just a few days ago? You never really know kind of, of, of the messaging that's going in, in on inside of the building. Uh, I know that, that players love Rack. Uh, they love playing for Rack. Uh, they got off to you know, kind of a slow start, played a bunch of really good football teams. Uh, and now I've kind of hit the reset button and have a win under their belt. So uh, it'll be a challenge for us. Can you tell much difference in the Texans offense based on the new parts that were added in before this season? Well, as everybody knows, they lost Hopkins, which I'm not shedding a tear about. Uh, he's a he's an outstanding player. But, you know, they, they added some some pieces and some weapons there, too. Cooks had eight, I think, catches Sunday against Jacksonville, went for 161. Cobb had six catches. Fuller's still there. They had David Johnson. And then the X Factor with Deshaun, uh, who, who can extend plays. He can run the ball. He can throw the ball. We know their personnel fairly well, and they know us fairly well. So we'll have to be on our, our P's and Q's and, and, and match up well against them. What's the biggest challenge to prepare for this game being that you just played on Tuesday? Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a quick turnaround for us. You know, we're kind of treating it like, like you would a Thursday night game after a Sunday game, kind of that schedule. Uh, we got to get the guys back in early in the week and, and, and get their bodies healed up and, and then, you know, try to get a little bit of speed later on in the week to get ready for the actual game. So uh, the most important part, though, is, is the health of the players, getting, getting everybody as least close to 100% as possible so that we can go out on Sunday and be full tilt. John, good luck against the Texans on Sunday, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mike. Always good to see you. All right. When we come back on Titans All Access, Coach Dave McGinnis joins us to go beneath the surface, a deep dive at how you defend Deshaun Watson, the Texans quarterback. This is an interesting look. You'll want to see it next on Titans All Access. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. Today, we're going to look at four plays of the Houston offense with Deshaun Watson at quarterback is the key component that defenses have to zero in on when they are playing Houston's offense. Let's take a look. This first look we're looking at, this is seven men up on the line of scrimmage. You will see various players walked up in different gaps. You've got both edges set on the snap of the football. You will watch some of these people bail out and they're running a cage rush. A cage rush is when you put tremendous pressure on the cylinder, force the quarterback out and force him out, hopefully away from his throwing hand, as you see them do here. And then you have your edges set and everybody collapse on top of him. This is what you want to do with a cage rush. Constant pressure up the middle, good edges set on the outside, give him zone pressure with different coverage looks so that he can't immediately throw the football. Our second example, now we are in man to man. They are in man to man with the play action. Again, you can still see the pressure up in the cylinder. And when you're playing man to man with pressure up in the cylinder, you've got to have correct leverage on the player that you're covering man to man so that he doesn't have an immediate throw. Watch what a nice job they do off of this man to man with a pressure from a six man front. You're gonna get some one on ones with the six man front. So it's extremely, extremely important to get on the edge of your blockers and win the one on ones. Now again, we're in 11 personnel. Now look at how many people are standing up. You got two people now with their hands on the ground defensively. Now on the snap of the football, what we're going to get, now we're playing man to man. 
Houston tries to counteract this man-to-man. -man. Look at the two people crossing underneath. Baltimore does a tremendous job of playing over and under with a the tailpipe. They're on top of their people again. And now with this pressure, with man-to-man -man on the backside, now we see a beautiful three-man game executed up inside, still with the edges set, but now your three-man game is, again, your cage rush pressure up inside the cylinder. Our last look, look at the defense deployment in the back end. It starts to look like man-to-man -to, -man to begin with. Look at the players creeping up. Now watch them bail out. And now what you're doing, you're bringing pressure from his left side, making the read, initial read, when he gets the football hard to look at, hard to discern. Once he starts trying to escape up in the cylinder, what he likes to do, you have that area closed off. Really nice job by Baltimore deploying different looks to keep him not only from making instant decisions throwing the football, but then collapsing the pocket around him, getting good pressure up the cylinder and keeping the edges set. Coming up next, Titans president and CEO Burke Nihill is standing by to visit with our Amy Wells. Stand by for more Titans All Access. Welcome back to Titans All Access. I am now joined by Burke Nihill, who is the Titans president and CEO. Burke, I'm so glad you're here because we have so much to talk about when it comes to Nissan Stadium. And start off, just run me through some of the things that are so different at Nissan Stadium this year. Well, there will be quite a bit that's different about the game day experience at the stadium. We've spent a lot of time, six months in fact, working on uh, adapting Nissan Stadium to a, to a COVID environment to make sure that it's a safe and comfortable place for fans to, to come back to, to watch the Titans play. The differences will start in the parking lot. Fans will notice that unfortunately this year, there's no tailgating. When they get to the gates, we'll see floor clings, keeping fans about six, seven feet away. The magnetometers will work a little bit differently this year. People won't have to take things out of their pockets as they have in the past. We're encouraging people not to bring bags. That will slow down the lines and, and create clusters. Of course, the biggest difference is when they get in the stadium, there's gonna be reduced capacity anywhere between 12.5% and 21% as the season goes on. Fans will be sitting in socially distanced pods of one to six fans, six feet apart from each other. That will just make sure that they can enjoy the experience. We're excited to welcome fans back. We know that Titans fans are so excited about getting back in Nissan Stadium. What message do you have to them as they return to their home to watch the Titans play? I would say thank you and, and welcome back. Thank you for sticking with us. It's, it's been a, a long time since the AFC Championship. It feels like it's three or four years ago at this point. And Tennessee and Nashville have been through a lot, and our fans have been through a lot during that time. We've adopted the, the slogan, Tennessee Tough, in, in honor of, of, of Tennesseans and Nashvilleans uh, who have been tenacious and resilient and have uh, stuck together throughout this. We're so proud to be a part of this community, and we, we thank them for, for sticking with us while we figured out how we can uh, create a safe stadium plan. Burke, thank you so much for taking some time with us. Thank you. Guys, there's so much more Titans All Access on the way. You don't want to miss it, including our Nissan Insider. Stick around. On the next Titans All Access, the Titans wrap up October with a visit from the Pittsburgh Steelers. General Manager John Robinson previews the game and gives us an update on the Titans roster. With the NFL trade deadline approaching, the season is heating up and the Titans are right in the middle of the fight. We'll get you ready for the showdown at Nissan Stadium. All that and a lot more on the next Titans All Access. Time now on Titans All Access for the Nissan Insider. Amy, I'm not going to put you on the spot and ask you to name your favorite Titan, but I'm going to guess that if you have a top five, Kevin Byard would be in the top five. Oh, yeah. Kevin Byard would probably be top two or three. Oh, mm -hmm. very nice. Well, the reason is very simple. Kevin Byard is a great player, but for all of us, we've gotten to know him as a human being, and he's an even better guy than he is safe. One, two, uh, I hit the bag when I wake up. Pound for pound, I'm greater. Nobody want to step up to me. Because every second I get better, got no time to settle. I'm a legend. What the hell is the fee? Uh, uh. There are so many different ways that you can introduce Kevin Byard. Number 31, the mayor of Murfreesboro, Pro Bowl safety. But how about this one, Kevin Byard? United Way spokesperson for Metro Nashville. Congratulations. How did that come about? Well, I appreciate it, Mike. Uh, honestly, it came about uh, this offseason. Uh, obviously, you know, things happen in this business of football. Jarrell Casey ended up getting traded to the Denver Broncos, and I understand that he was the spokesperson here for a few years. And so once the opportunity came about, you know, the Titans kind of reached out to me, and United Way asked also 
and told me they wanted me to be the spokesperson. It's a tremendous honor. Like I've always spoke about, you know, once I got to the NFL and I got to this position, this platform, I want to be able to give back to the community. And uh, what better way to give back with United Way? I mean, our partnership has, has been so tremendous and beneficial to the community. You know, we just kind of did our Stuff the Bus campaign and was able to give a lot of equipment, school supplies, and much needed stuff uh, for the kids as they begin school. So it's been awesome. Through the United Way and through camps and various things, it's always kids with you. That's the way it always sort of seems is that Kevin Byard is always trying to give back specifically to kids. And, and we all love kids, but for you and your experience, why are they such a big deal and why are they such a focus? I mean, the, the, the kids and the youth, they're our future. It's just something that obviously when I was growing up, man, I understand that I didn't have a lot of opportunities or different things like that growing up. So when I got to this platform, I knew that I wanted to be able to give back to this because at the end of the day, you know, if I can touch just one child, just spark their brain or just be able to give them something, give them some type of motivation, uh, it could change their entire life. So I just understand how important that is to the future of our country, to the future of our world, that the youth, you know, has every opportunity to be successful as possible. How have you not forgotten where you come from? I mean, it's just simple, man. I just try to stay humble, try to keep a really good foundation. I have really good people around me, my, my wife, my family back home. I think it's just, it's just easy not to forget where you came from when at the end of the day, I'm always just constantly just being reminded, you know, how blessed I am. I just always keep remembering where I came from, where I came from. It, it's just who I am, honestly. Well, when we did one of our first interviews with you, you told us you're going to buy your mom a house. Mm -hmm. And I told her that Give me at least two, three more years and I'm gonna buy you that big house that you want on the hill. And you ain't gotta worry about nothing for real, for real, so. And you did it. <laughs> and, we, and we saw that and when you said that, it moved people to tears. And then when they saw the pictures this off season of you doing that, a, a lot of people got emotional. Can you describe what that was like fulfilling? What was a dream for you? Yeah, honestly, man, it was, I've kind of spoke about it when I posted it on Instagram, but honestly, it, it was a pipe dream for me. One of, or if not, the biggest accomplishment I've ever accomplished since I've been in the NFL. Do you feel like you're a sort of a motivator or a mentor for younger players? Who, because you're not really a young player anymore. You're sort of in that mid-range now. Right, right. Yeah, honestly, I try to be both. I mean, I always try to motivate everybody by my actions. I don't really like to talk a lot, but when I feel the need to talk and, and speak to the young guys, I always try to tell them, man, hey, I was in the same position, you know, I feel like I've always been doubted. I feel like I've a lot of different stages in my life people can use for examples to try to keep going and keep going. So that's kind of the spokesperson I want to be. I want to be a spokesperson for the people that have been doubted before in their life or feel like they wasn't getting the recognition they deserve, that it really doesn't matter. It's all about being a great person, having a great heart, you know, and good things happen to great people. So that's what I try to do. It ain't about what they do. It's about what we do. Yeah. It's about the intensity we bring. Yeah. It's about the that we do. Yeah. Let's go hard, man. Give me your all on every single play. Because I'm going to give you my all. And I'm going to own everything. We look up to you in so many different ways, but I think for a lot of us, we admire your courage as we wrap up this interview. Two kids within like uh, <laughs> 11 months. Are, are you ready for this? Uh, You know, I don't think you, you're necessarily always ready. You know, I just try to... <laughs> I've been trying to prepare myself for this for a long time. And you kind of, you know, just like the NFL, man, it's an ever-changing league and my life is ever-changing right now. So I just kind of go with the flows and like you said, remain positive and just always think about positivity. And it, it's just a blessing. That's what I kind of look at. God's been blessing me with a great responsibility to be able to raise two children and be married and have a wife and raise a family. So I'm just trying to be the best man and the best husband and the best father that I can possibly be. Mike Keith, we've reached the portion of the show where it is time for you to discuss the keys to beating the Houston Texans. Key number one, Clowney. You know, he used to play for the Texans. He did. He did. They drafted him. Yeah. They traded him. It's his first game ever against his former team. He was getting a lot of pressure on Tuesday night. He nearly had an interception. It's Clowney time. You're so excited. Mike, what about a second key? Uh, keep doing a good job on third down offensively. Titans did much better on third down against Buffalo than they had done back in September. Keep improving third down performance to stay on the field. All right, can we squeak out one more? Janu, Janu, Janu. Janu Smith, five catches, 40 yards, two touchdowns against Buffalo on Tuesday night. 
But normally, with a pressure team like Houston, the tight end is a guy who can make a difference. In the past against the Texans, Jonu Smith has had big plays. The Titans need him to do that again. He's an effective weapon against this particular defense because he causes so many matchup problems. Can you say Clowney one more time? Clowney. It just makes me happy. I'm a big fan. Uh-huh. I'm a big Jadivian Clowney. <laughs> what can I say? It's good. All right. So let's talk about this weekend against the Houston Texans. And it is Mars Pet Care Adoption Weekend. Tell me more, Mike Keith. Well, I'm you intrigued. Well, you know, I have a special girl in my life that I adopted back in January from Adopt the Golden Tennessee. It's Molly. I love Molly. She helps me prepare for all the broadcasts. And adopting a dog was one of the best things that we ever did. And Mars Pet Care is trying to get you to adopt a dog this weekend. It's their big weekend to do it, not just in Nashville, but also in Houston. And so you're gonna see the cutouts in Nissan Stadium of all of these dogs, which is gonna be outstanding. And it's your chance to do what I did, put somebody special, put a special dog more appropriately in your life. Visit this website to find out exactly how you can adopt a dog this weekend. Are you telling me that Nissan Stadium is going to be filled with pictures of dogs that I could take home? Yes. Wow. Dreams do come true, folks. Dreams do come true. So for my Golden Retriever, Molly, and my Golden Retriever, Major, who I've had longer, and for Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.